The McElroy brothers are not experts, and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool baby? It's familiar, but not too familiar, but not too Welcome to My Brother, My Brother, Me, an advice show for the modern era. I'm your oldest brother, Justin McElroy. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm your sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy. Yes. Well, that's our show. Thanks for listening, everybody. Justin was supposed to start saying stuff, and then he didn't. Why do I always have to be the one to start saying stuff? I don't know. Ask it past you from the last 317 weeks or so. It has not been that consistent. I'm going to need statistics. I think it's been at least 308 of 318 times that you have been the one to introduce whatever our opening bit was. Travis and I and Griffin have been recording a remote podcast for 300 and some thousand episodes. And uh, usually we were spread across the country like so much silt across the riverbed. Um, But today we're recording a remote podcast. When Travis is literally eight minutes from my home, it is a level of um, what do you Dis- think? Contempt? Disassociation, like yeah, we just yeah. we just we just my brother, my brother, me colon we just can't. Well, we just here's can't. the thing. I look at it the other way. It's actually it's not about distaste for being in Justin's presence, but rather a respect for Griffin. Because what I did not want is for Justin and I to be in the same room making intimate goofs with each other in intimate which we goofs. could see each other's faces while Griffin was like, what are you guys giggling at? Fucking tickle fights, fucking butterfly kisses after bedtime prayers. And I'm over and I'm over here like trying to replicate butterfly kisses on my own cheek with like a Swiffer or something. He's practicing but butterfly kisses on his arm for when he finally gets to do them in real life. It's not the same. Try it with a, a watermill. How does it? It's just more real. If you try to give a watermelon butterfly kisses. Especially if you put the watermelon into the microwave for a couple seconds first. Oh, yeah. Let it it (laughs) cool, though, or else you'll burn your eyeballs out of your head. I love this ribald 2000s humor. See, I do French butterfly kisses, Mm. and that's where you get a little bit of eyeball on it. (laughs) (laughs) You just touch corneas. Just touch the cornea very gently. (laughs) It It hurts very much. (laughs) <laughs> um, but Tommy, then, what about a risk of blindness? No, that's just a myth, honey. Don't worry, it'll be fine. Don't worry. But Tommy, it's below thirty-two degrees outside, and I ah ah ah. That's it. Dead. <laughs> End yeah, of damn life. Damn it! I can't wait for Bob Carlyle to drop the sequel to to be kisses. Um, Butterfly just, necking. Well, I just think there's maybe other types of kisses that you can do with your body, and I think. I mean, we could sit here and try and shoot the shit about what those would be, but I think Bob Carlyle's probably been at that for about 19 years now. <laughs> he, hasn't come up with, he hasn't come up with anything yet. If there's an amazing sequel to that song, you know he's been digging in that, that deep water to catch that big fish, to find that one that one that got away, that sequel to, but, <laughs> to BK2. To, yeah, here comes the BK2, everybody. Check out my mixtape. I'm Bob Carlyle. <laughs> I picture Bob Carlyle like, walking up to like make out point or whatever and just looking in windows and writing down stuff on like his legal pad which is like uh, oh excellent can i rhyme that no uh. albatross kisses no no bob that's someone that no listen albatross kisses here's how it works <laughs> extend your elbows out no bob, armadillo bob, kisses no no no, no you roll up in the ball and you give everyone leprosy I'm, it's really sad if you look at Bob Carl, Carlisle's Instagram. It's just a bunch of pictures of him in front of computers and in various studios with hashtags like BK2 about to drop. Yeah. BK2 coming along real nice. Can't wait to hit you all with BK2. BK2 is in the oven and it's about to pop out real fresh for you. 2016. But the numbers just get lower and lower as you scroll back through the feed. It's like 2008. But BK2 is is coming. Y'all get ready. Launch Here's, party. Stream. Check it out. Check it out. It got sampled in the latest DJ Khaled track. You heard when we shot it out and he played, and it was like Brazilian taper kisses. Like Brazilian <laughs> taper kisses. 
I what don't it's know. Gonna be, it's it's going to be the kind of thing where it's just going to be like over and like it's just going to come out with no pomp and circumstance. It's just going to drop one day. And everyone's like, shit, did you know that new BK2 joint dropped? And everyone's like, what? What? There was what? no, I didn't read about it in the trades. It, I didn't, I didn't know. I wasn't, I didn't know. I would have had a party. Carl and uh, Bob's like, no, I'm not putting BK2 on iTunes. They screw me one too many times. Yeah, this is BK2 a tight- is all- <laughs> It's only on my space. <laughs> it's a title, ex- title exclusive. Title exclusive. <laughs> it's, did you know Title was founded by Bob Carlyle and Jay Z to get it's working a, yeah. together for like the eighth time? Is this Bob Carlyle? Yeah, it is. So are you going to join Title? Here's the one thing. The only thing that I need from you is no, I can't do it. No, we need BK2 to be a title it's exclusive. It's not ready, Jay Z. I told it's you not it's ready. not ready. The world's you not gotta ready drop for BK2. It on us. Well, None tell me this, ready. Bob, after I mix BK1 for you. I tell know, me, Jay-Z. Tell me the animal, Carlisle. I'm dying over here. Capybara. <gasps> don't you no. fucking tell. Don't you tell you a soul. You did it again, Carlisle. You crazy for this one, Hove. No, that's... Oh, if that if that was all it was, Jay-Z. I've known Capybara for 13 years now. <laughs> He's been haunting me in my dreams. I've known it's him, but I just can't catch it. I have dreams sometimes. I'm standing naked in front of the blazing sun, and there's a volcano behind me, and I can feel its ash pelting down on the back of the nape of my neck, and right in front of me is the capybara, ever elusive, darting in and out between palm trees and my kindergarten What does it even look like? There. I don't know. What is there? I can't. I try to focus on it as like it fades into the mists. You just gotta Google it, Bob. Oh, oh wait, hold on. Yeah. yeah oh, okay. okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. How would that kiss? I don't know. That's listen. You're the magician here, Bob. I'm just Jay Z. You're Bob Carlisle. You're, you're the, you're the musical genius here, not me. <laughs> you I, I, I'm just trying to bear kiss. I, I know the animal. I just don't know how to kiss like it. And according to Wikipedia, the word capybara is derived from a tupi word, which means one who will eat slender leaves. And I'm wondering if I can sort of incorporate that into the kiss. Like, maybe you put some grass in your mouth, and then you kiss your daughter goodnight. Fuck. Maybe, tragic no. news Tragic maybe. news today is Bob Carlisle has been killed in a terrible zoo accident. He leapt into a copy, <laughs> copybara enclosure. <laughs> Onlookers say he was attempting to copybara kiss. Tragedy strikes tonight. Bob Carlisle has choked to death trying to eat his daughter's hair. He said <laughs> that's the only thing he could come up with that was like that. And then he died from it. So it's very sad, but we are hope we're gonna I'm Geraldo Rivera and I'm here getting ready to smash open Bob Carlisle's vault to see <laughs> <laughs> We're pretty sure the demo for BK two is in here. I'm joined by special guest Jay Z. And we're about to just smash open Bob Carlisle's Bob vault. Bob would want this. And oh my god. Would want. Oh my god, Bob Carlisle is alive and inside the vault. The prestige. <laughs> David Blaine. I didn't even know you were friends with Bob Carlisle. Hey, let's do some advice. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bob, if you want to come on the show at any time, just talk Yeah, you, you, you'd be a welcome guest. If you want to use this as a vehicle to debut BK2, like, we are fucking so ready for it, dog. Yeah, we'll drop it right on here. Uh, once or twice a week, I go to a small corner store and get an egg and cheese sandwich for lunch. Usually there are two guys working there, one man in the cash register and the other in the kitchen, or sitting around. I've been doing this for almost a year, so kitchen guy knows my order and will ask if I want the usual when I go in around lunchtime. One time, kitchen guy wasn't there, so I had to get my sandwich from cash register guy. The only thing is, he made a noticeably better sandwich than normal. It was crispier, lighter, and had perfectly proportioned ingredients. <laughs> <laughs> but that was only for one day. <laughs> My regular guy is back. And so are the substandard sandwiches. Is there anything, anyway, to let Catcher Man know <laughs> it's true calling? Or should I suck it up and avoid rocking the boat? <laughs> That's from the, thanks, Pinky in Pennsylvania. <laughs> well, like, the, the only, like, the only way this could get better is if one day cash register guy wasn't there. And so kitchen guy made him a sandwich and was like, all right, that'll be three fifty. Six out of five years of change. How did you do that that fast? Your fingers were blur. You got me my change so fast. That was crazy. The, you hand me my change in Mayan nickels. How did you do this? How did you pull this off? This is doubloons. You threw the change up in the air, and the bills landed perfectly in my wallet, and the coins landed perfectly in my pocket. You, you've got a gift. <laughs> Don't you do this to me, sandwich guy. No, you've got a gift, cashier guy. 
Okay, so there's cat. There's two. There's two guys there. There's yeah. Cash. I'm just gonna call him Cash. Cash. Okay. And then Sandy. Cash and uh, what's the nickname for the kitchen guy? Oh, kitchen Tango. guy. Tango. Okay. So Tango, the kitchen guy, is not making the sandwiches how you would ideally like them. Cash guy guys better. Do you think? See, this is the problem with promoting up. And I've said this so many times. I bet you he got so good at the kitchen and the boss was so impressed that he got promoted to the person manning the cash register. But this is the problem, right? You promote up and then you don't have the best people doing the best jobs. This is business 101. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. That wasn't a goof. You were just Yeah, doing was like there a, a goof like in lesson. somewhere in there? Ayn Rand? No, I'm just saying that I think that that's probably what happened here is like, I don't think it's that. Um, I don't, I'm not sure that they missed their calling. I'm saying that they like, maybe got promoted out of the guy making the sandwiches even though he's like still got it yeah. so i like, still got the heat i bet he i bet he hates being a desk jockey every morning he comes there in, in the field he opens up the shop every morning and he just like runs his hands over like the kitchen counters and he's just like hello old friend i <laughs> miss you he touches the egg and cheese sandwich fixings cash register guy why do they have you work working a working a desk and not not getting out there and cooking cooking those good good sandwiches. I shot a kid. <laughs> Cash register guy. I don't even know why you that would. I don't know why you would do that while cooking breakfast sandwiches. But I also don't know why you wouldn't go to prison. <laughs> My sandwiches are too good. And then at the end of the movie, he John McClane's about to get shot, and he makes a really good breakfast sandwich. He's like, you did it. Um uh I mean there's nothing you can do about this right like you know now I think you've you can't say you two should switch jobs cuz that's can't. crazy can't um you know now that the sandwiches that you ate for over a year were not good right maybe they're okay that makes them worse by comparison yeah, too though right yeah so I don't think you can go back here knowing what you know let me I I would like to pitch something Something okay. we okay. don't normally endorse here on My Brother, My Brother, and Me. But, you know, it's tw- it's 2016. I'm saying maybe you go bold and brassy. You walk in tomorrow. You order a sandwich, and you say, but I want it made by him. And you point at cash register guy, and kitchen guy's like, what? And cash register guy's like, what? And you just say, he made a sandwich for me once. And it was the best version I've ever tasted. I want him to make it. Kitchen guy, I want you to watch. And I want you to do exactly that, like that from now on because I'm a paying customer. This is I'm America. Because I'm a huge asshole. I'm the You're biggest not my friends. ever. These people aren't your friends, Griffin. You're paying for goods and services. You should get the best sandwich this available. Is... You should not take a second-class sandwich because you're afraid to ask for what you want. Travis is, um, Travis is giving great advice, especially if you want to spend the next year enjoying a breakfast sandwich of eggs and cheese and spit because that's what you're getting Listen, you're that asshole i'm not saying it's not a risky maneuver it is definitely a risky maneuver and if it works great if it doesn't no more sandwiches for you not only at this restaurant but perhaps anywhere oh, oh, word, oh make word will no spread. mistake <laughs> this breaks two ways yeah one it's all fixed this will not happen two you never go to this place again you might even have to move if there's some kind of intricate sandwich network in this city where word spreads about that demanding guy who wanted cash register guy to make the sandwich. But otherwise, you're stuck eating sandwiches for the rest of your life that you know are subpar. Yeah. That now, now you've tasted ambrosia and you can't go back to your regular humdrum lifestyle. If I know anything from like your Alice in Wonderlands through the Looking Glass kind of books. You can't go back to your humdrum lifestyle. You're going to dream of that fantasy sandwich. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, could you could buy the place. Yeah, now if we're you, talking. Now we're talking. You can you kickstart it. Kickstart to buy the place. I need this, I, please. Indiegogo. I actually think, okay, okay. I think you could ease into it. You guys are familiar with, um, I, I, I first heard Al Franken refer to it as kidding on the square. Yes. So you could kid on the square <laughs> and say, see, listen. This, uh, hey, I just want to let you know, you better watch out for your job, because this guy over here, when he made my sandwich, oh. it was the best it's ever been. I love your work, but he was killing it, and then it's like, Haha, very good one, very good joke. And it's like, you know what? <laughs> Let's keep this joke going. Why don't you come over here and show him exactly what you did? <laughs> you know what be fucking, like, super <laughs> funny? What if, what if you just left? What if you <laughs> left right now? What if you gave you up cooking his- forever? 
Um, I'm saying you could do th- you could kid your way into it yeah. when you like you know what just for laughs just watch him and tell him what you do differently because I want to know what your secret is because that guy's is great so you're backing into it with a compliment what yeah. you do is you'll get that guy on your side that's a secret you got to convert that guy to like being on your team for sure and it will turn kitchen guy against you but you can convert this with laughter you can just make it into a big funny joke where at the end of the joke the punchline is mm, what a sandwich you could also uh, just make it up straight up comment and say i would like two sandwiches and i'd like you all to compete for my favor may the odds be ever it's the hungry games <laughs> i mean th- that's actually a good idea travis i mean i definitely wouldn't phrase it the way you phrased it but i'd say like i need two sandwiches prepared simultaneously and served up to me at the exact same time <laughs> I have a very, very particular fetish and a particular set of skills that make me a nightmare for men like you. <laughs> Those skills are, I am just a really shitty customer. <laughs> I'm a bad, yeah, and a bad, um, not a great human either. How about a Yahoo? Please. I just want to tell y'all, this is like a fun little update on my life, is I have the Wikipedia page open for Capybara here to sort of look into their physiology and how they might kiss. Um... And Wikipedia has a conservation status for, like, animal species um, to let you know, like, how they do in vis-a-vis extinction. Um, Capybara, lowest rating. Least concern is the rating on this conservation status. Awesome. Keep it, keep it up, Capybara. Like, you're my favorite animal, and you're doing so good out there. Keep doing what you're doing, because it's great. By which I mean we don't hunt you for sport Wait, or food. Wait, so, so this rating is saying, like, if someone's like, you know, I'm just worried about copy bars, like, don't. No, dog, don't. Don't even worry about it. Don't. What the other thing it could be saying is, like, if you got to kill something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hey, do you want to <laughs> feel alive? Sure, we all do. This is, that would be a fuck chart. I can't even, if you're a happy bar and you see it, you're like, so least concerned. So it's fine if I just, like, die you just write it in marker like i derek I highest concern derek the copy bar please do not hunt. <laughs> <laughs> i can't even joke about this um how about this yahoo that was sent in by zoe kensky right and high thank you zoe it's by yahoo answers users something has gone wrong because our website sucks um but there's uh an antacid banner advertisement at the top of the page featuring larry the cable guy so let's just say larry the cable guy asks how do I teach my dog discipline through the martial arts? Mm. I have a problem with my dog. He poops all over the house, chews on my footwear, constantly knocks over the trash cans, makes a mess in the house every time I leave. Just an overall lack of discipline and structure in his life. He is also a bit of a pushover with other dogs, gets constantly intimidated and pushed around. Mm. His bark mm-hmm. leaves much to be desired as well. Almost seems as if he is saying sorry every time he barks. Mm-hmm. He definitely needs the mm-hmm. discipline that only martial arts can teach. Obviously, grappling arts out of the question since he lacks opposable thumbs. But what other options are there for him? What? Uh, how do I teach him how to roundhouse kick other dogs every time they get in his face? Is there any way to teach him to channel his chi in order to produce a more menacing bark? I heard Kung Fu teaches several animal forms. Is there a dog form in there? What about karate? Are there any empty-handed techniques made especially for dogs? I simply want my dog to be a dog amongst dogs, a menacing terror, alpha all the way, and to stop pooping all over the house. <laughs> um, one, I think there's a huge missed opportunity to just immediately uh, rule out any of the grappling arts, because, like, what's the last thing a dog's opponent would expect? Yeah, that's a good point. Right? Is to, get them, is to use their weight against them, get them real low to the ground, and throw them with a jujitsu throw. Mm-hmm. But can you read the bit about animal forms again? Um, I heard Kung Fu teaches several animal forms. Is there a dog form in there? Okay, so that... That's a mis- per- misnomer. There's a misunderstanding yes. that, that has occurred here. That is not what that means. Although, I will say this. First of all, Kung Fu Panda. Second of all, in Kung Fu Panda, like the snake uses snake style. And that's my second of all, is that I think if a snake is going to learn Kung Fu, I think snake style would be like... Oh, that's my jam. What's your jam? Yeah, it, I don't think there's like an immediate correlation, but if a dog was going to learn one form, dog it would be form, dog's, dog form would be it. Doggy yeah. style makes the most sense. Yeah, so you gotta teach him doggy style. Doggy style's a very funny joke. Thank you. I just I didn't want that to be the thing that people tweeted at us after the no, episode. Yeah, and we're like, yeah. how did you not say doggy style? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. I hate when people do that. We need a segment at the end of each bit called low hanging fruit. Yeah, <laughs> just like here's the things that we know we could have said, but we just like left on the scrap pile. So you don't um, have to go rummaging through our garbage. I've actually like, just here. been building my whole comedy style based off of that since it's like day so one. Far. Thank you. Yeah. Um. Uh. Here's here's what I'll say. This is one thing that if we don't say it, people are going to tweet at us. 
You should never, with no exceptions, you should never do kung fu on a dog, with one exception. <laughs> so let me get this straight. With no exceptions, you should never do kung fu on a dog. 100% of the time, you should never do kung, <laughs> never fu, on do kung fu on a dog. But there's only with one time, ex- there's only one instance in which it is acceptable and or encouraged, and that is if you are teaching that kung fu to the dog. Well, we're missing an obvious answer here. Okay, I was a dog trainer, um, and I can tell you the easiest way for any dog to learn is to observe other dogs doing it. So what you actually need in this situation is like a Mr. Miyagi dog. You need Mm. like an older dog who's out of the game, who's like, no, I don't. I don't do kung fu anymore. I don't do that anymore. And then he sees your dog getting picked on by the other dogs at the dog park. And finally, Mr. Miyagi dog is like, all right, come on, dog. Like, I'll... I'll show you how to like catch flies with chopsticks and trim bonsai trees and wax on, wax off. And then you don't have to do shit, but then you do have to worry about your dog getting super good at Kung Fu and just beating you up whenever it wants food and shit. (laughs) Oh, I just Googled karate dog. (laughs) Oh, there was a 2004 movie. (laughs) Called the Karate Dog. <laughs> Tell got, me more. It's got Simon Rex, Jamie Presley were in it. It's also got uh, Pat Morita makes an appearance. So oh, no. Sheridan. Um, let me just keep reading. Uh, it looks like John Voigt was in the motion picture. And the, who was the voice of Chocho, the titular Karate Dog, who in the fucking cover art is also holding a police badge? <laughs> Excuse me, excuse me, karate police dog. It looks to me like yes. Let me double. Yes, it was Chevy Chase. Of course, it was. Man, we make fun of Chevy Chase gets a hard time for uh for being kind of a dillweed to some people. It sounds like to me, but um, it sounds like maybe he's had kind of a hard road. We should probably try to cut him a little slack. This box art is he lays in in bed at night just thinking about karate dog and weeping. Y'all, this box art for Car- the Karate Dog is the most Buck Wild JPEG I've ever streamed onto my lappy. I'm talking about a, a, a I, I'm talking about like a bull bull mastiff with a fucking necktie and an eye patch. I'm talking about car- the the Karate Dog is taking up two wow. thirds of the cover, and he's got a little sash on, and also a police badge. And then there's one weird corner dog who you can. only only see like a third of its horrified face as it peeks into the corner as if to say what's happening in this movie john voight no um people uh who are also fans of the flop house will appreciate that when you click on the poster for karate dog image related images what's that oh a talking cat the talking cat (laughs) the spiritual cousin to karate dog (laughs) okay so there's another poster for karate dog that does at one uh, does not mention Chevy Chase. Two, as near as I can tell, it looks like Karate Dog. Okay, this oh, is essential. Jesus. Oh wow! It is, it is still wearing the badge <laughs> around its neck. And I is that a black belt? Or yeah, that, is that I a, mean, the, don't get me wrong. They're not going to make a movie about a dog that does karate if it's just starting out learning the martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bad the Karate, karate dog. dog. He's a, he's, a, he's a yellow belt. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, other note about the trailer. Hi, this is hey, this is John Voight. Uh, yeah, is this my agent? Yes, it is. Listen, uh, I was looking at the um the uh, cover art for Karate Dog. Am I really credited below Simon Rex? Does Simon Rex really get billing above me, John Voight? Yeah, that's the way it should go. Sorry, we didn't have a lot of room. What with all the badges and crazy dogs? Is this seeing as how it's called the Karate Dog? Is it a spiritual successor to the Karate Kid? Does it go like the Karate Kid one, two, three, Karate Kid mm. with uh uh oh Hillary Swank? Hillary Swank and then the Karate Dog. Like, is this all in the same canon? Is this is this Karate Kid canon? I mean, Pat, Pat Morita. Mar- Pat Morita's appearance would intimate as much. Yeah. So is this y- canonical? Uh, I don't know. If this is part of the 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 quadrilogy of Karate Kid films now. 
It is now, as far as I'm concerned. If Okay, this is going to be a power hipster move. If your friends are like, I like the Karate Kid. Like, oh, do you? Have you seen them all? And they're like, yeah. I'm like, even Karate Dog? And they're like, what? And you're like, yeah, I didn't think so. And then, like, you cut them out of the forums or whatever. Hey, great news for everybody. Cancel your evening plans. You can stream the entirety of Karate Dog for free on YouTube. Oh, my God. You can God. Just watch the whole thing. Um, later. Can we, can we show the dog Karate Dog to teach it to stop being such a piece of shit? <laughs> Be more like this dog. Sound more, more like, like Chevy. Chevy Chase. Be more like Chevy Chase. <laughs> Do you think Chevy Chase ever lies down on his armless sofa and he, he calls it his Chevy Chase lounge? He probably does, uh, right? Hey, how about another question, though? Nine Lives made $17.1 million <laughs> at the box office and received a 7% positive rating from Rotten Tomatoes. Speaking of trash, we have another segment that we <laughs> cooked up last week uh, where people who are in the uh, trash and garbage industry are going to tell us the stories of the oddest things they've ever collected in their day-to-day lives. Yeah. Uh, and Travis, you said you, you received some of these in a new segment we're calling Trash Stories. Um, yeah, we got, we got a Griffin, bunch you're of them. Just saying that Griffin was going to sing the oh, jingle saying, for Trash for Stories. A trash story is a new kind of way to love. Uh, We received a lot of trash stories this week. Um, Some of them so gross to trump any humor that was present in them. Oops, oh no. Um, Uh, Well, all of the, all the, we used to get, you know, almost like 90% of our emails were dookie questions. So I feel like people needed like a place to put that energy. And I'm worried (laughs) that it's going to funnel into trash stories mountain. Um, you, you're not wrong, but there were a couple that, uh, contained no overt grossness. Um, this one is from Cassandra in Tennessee. My stepdad is a garbage man, and over the last few years, he has scored enough fully functional camping gear for my family of five, me, husband, and three kids, to take a three-week-long camping trip without purchasing a thing. We had sleeping bags, cots, two coolers, a huge tent, flashlights, backpacks, hiking boots, and much more. All courtesy of other people's trash. Pictures of the trip attached. Um, That's so amazing. That's two things. First of all, you're welcome. Because I I think most of that probably came from me. Because I have gone (laughs) camping once in the last six years. And I got very bad diarrhea in the woods. And guess what? When you have diarrhea, the woods, there is no comfort for you there. (laughs) You will find no solace. And so I I said, okay, goodbye sleeping bags, goodbye cots, goodbye two coolers, goodbye huge tent, flashlights, backpacks, hiking boots, and much more. Um, And it sounds like your stepdad sort of had a bonanza in my my can. (laughs) (laughs) I... And the, se- the 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 second thing is that this I'm totally into it, dude. Like free cycling uh, or whatever it's called, freeganism. Like I'm totally, I'm super down with it. Reduce, reuse, loving it. A tent. At that tent point, is where you had a problem because mine was hiking boots. Uh, I mean, you can delouse those, whatever. But like a tent is you're sleeping in trash. <laughs> <laughs> it is a house made of trash. That's, Man, that's a nice that's, scent, though. Is I'll, it a nice scent? I'll forward I, you guys the, the image. I mean, you don't need to forward it to me. It's mine. And <laughs> I it was. Two, I have two big questions. One is not a question, just an observation. I really like the image of everybody who has thrown this stuff out who went camping, which is like, never again. Mm. I'm never doing this again. I'm th- I'm leaving all this in the garbage. I'm never going again. Like, you didn't even want to store it somewhere. You're just, like, that certain that you would never go camping again. Yes, I, is, yes I was. The tent, there's two options here that I find very puzzling. The first is that the tent was left in the garbage fully assembled. That seems unlikely to me. I don't even know how you would transport that. The second is that your stepfather knows how to put together a tent without any instructions or pieces or anything that would be i cannot fathom that He's tents are the wizard. hardest things to make and it, that he was able to put that together without any sort of instruction i think that's fascinating well i, that's I actually, on my team i can believe that justin because i think that the stepfather had the forethought to collect this stuff over many years according to this email thinking one day i will be able to gift my stepdaughter an entire set of camping stuff I think that's amazing. Uh, we have another one as well. 
this one is from the woman formerly known as Trash Lady. I worked for a trash company in the sales department until recently. The weirdest call I've gotten was from a man who had an abundance of cucumbers and was looking for a 30 cubic yard roll off container to put Good them in. God. The container is eight foot by 22 foot by six feet. Quite a few cucumbers. <laughs> The weirdest part was the man's immediate need for the container. He was desperate. <laughs> However, the cucumbers probably were still good because he invited me to come take as many as I wanted. I regret not going. Okay. Wouldn't that Okay, wouldn't that be the last call you make? Do you think that that person spent the day on the phone calling everybody they've ever met like, "Hey, did you remember how you were telling me one time that you really needed a bunch of cucumbers right now? Well, good news. <laughs> come on down." This do you fit. do you need pickles and have a lot of patience? Good news. This is this is that is so many cucumbers. I'm trying to math it out in my head, but that's like a thousand feet of cucumbers. And I think it's you a could lot fit. Of I think you could fit like a bunch of a bunch of cukes per foot, right? And I, the why only do you explanation? Ha- is that it's some kind of like rolled doll situation where it's like the man who wished for too many cucumbers and like he made a wish like, oh, Lord, I just love cu- I wish I had more cucumbers than I knew what to do with. I just love them so much. Because how do you, how does that sneak up on you? How do you wake up one point, day Travis. and you're like, where the f- hold on? Oh, shit. I have too many cucumbers. James Whoa, James and the many 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 regular size peaches. <laughs> I've done that. I've done that to myself before you go to the store. And you're like, do I have cucumbers at home? <laughs> no, I don't think I do. Yeah, I should get some more. And then you do that ten thousand times uh, in a day. <laughs> I'm in there. I know how. I know what that's like. Maybe you did, Travis, you mentioned pickles. Maybe this was not for disposal. Maybe this was. I need to make a lot of pickles now. Yeah, I want to. I, I have a Scrooge McDuck fetish, but with a weird twist. Um, <laughs> instead of coins. Trav, do you have any more before we? Just those are the two that I pulled. I don't. I don't want it to become a trash show, Justin. Um, That's fine. Think- any more so than it already definitely is. Let's get the main. Thing. Folks, I want to tell you about Squarespace. My brother, my brother, me is supported by Squarespace, which doesn't have anything to do with it. This is, listen, this is completely independent, just a commercial I decided to do, and they also gave us money for. Whether you need a landing page, a beautiful gallery, a professional blog, or an online store, it's all included with your Squarespace website. It's easy to create a website with Squarespace. I can vouch for that. Travis can vouch for that. Um, if you've never done it before, it, this is the place to start. Everybody's making web pages now, and it's time to stake your claim in the great wild west. And the best part is... They're going to give you a free custom domain to help people get to your uh, thing. That's not actually the freest thing. They're just giving you letters. That's not. The, I said it's the best. That's just some free letters. So that's not actually the best, but it is good. There's beautiful templates. Uh, you can design a best-in-class online store with Squarespace's award-winning templates, customizable settings, and more. All without a single plugin. If you need to make a web page, and you do, because otherwise nobody knows. How can I Google you if you don't have a web page? I can't. That's the answer. You got to work question. on your SEO, I think. Yeah, fix your SEO and start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash my brother. Get 10% off your first purchase of your own personal website. I can vouch, like Justin said, I, I made macroyshows.com on Squarespace. It took me like 45 minutes, like nothing. And it's so easy to update so we can like add new stuff to it and, you know, add pictures, change stuff to it whenever we need to. And it was like no time at all. And it looks really good. I'm very proud of it. And it was really easy. So, like, I, I'm a big fan of Squarespace. Um, and not only that, like, their customer service is amazing. They're, it It's so easy to figure out. And if you do have an issue, there's someone to help you. Plus, like, YouTube is full of videos about how to make it look even better. Like, it's amazing. You really want to use Squarespace. I'm a big fan. Can they? It says you get free custom domain. And I'm very excited about that. Can they just get me karate dog.com because i just went to it and it's available but it's for sale for twenty eight hundred uh dollars yeah. and like will they fit the will they foot the bill for that or am i gonna have to pay for that or how is it how is it Griffin, uh, it's gonna pay for itself i want to tell you guys about uh another sponsor we have this week which is me undies 
Uh, me undies is it's just the best undies. I'm I'm I think I'm let me check. I'm wearing a pair right now. Me too. Which, which me too. What fun design are you guys? You guys have this like summer one with all the inflatable toys and stuff. No, oh, mine's see, blue and it's got leaves and stuff on it. Wait, Love shit, Griffin, one. are we wearing the same one? Oh, but yeah, it happened. Love yeah. that. Love that. Synergy. Synergy. Corporate synergy. Um, whether you're wearing a suit or you're wearing sweats, I mean, those are the only two things I wear. Um, you, you're gonna spend <laughs> or a sweatsuit. Uh, you're spending 24 hours a day in your undies. Um, but y- your underwear is probably pretty boring and probably pretty uncomfortable, and it probably starts. You probably have like. It's probably just evil. A f- just a few tablespoons of just water in there at any time. Um, I want to tell you about MeUndies because MeUndies is made of sustainably sourced modal, which is a fabric that's twice as soft as cotton. It's indescribably soft and it indescribably fits good. And uh, you're going <laughs> to know why they're called the world's most comfortable underwear. And if you don't love your first pair of MeUndies, they're free, no questions asked. Shipping's free in the U.S. and Canada, and you can save up to $8 a pair with the MeUndie subscription plan. And in order to get down on that plan or get a single pair, you can get 20% off your first order if you go to MeUndies.com slash my brother. That's MeUndies.com slash my brother. Get 20% off your first order. One more time, MeUndies.com slash my brother. You know what I do whenever I get me undies? I throw, I have the, we get the monthly thing. So every month we get a new pair. Uh, and whenever I get one, I throw a pair of non me undies away. And I am so close to, to reaching 100% me undies. I'm, Just, I'm uh, within striking distance. Let me tell you, I've done it in my cross country move. Not a single old pair of stupid old underwear made its way with me. It's all me undies. I'm never looking back. I'm going whole hog, by which I mean the only thing my hog will touch. I can't. Uh, uh, I can't wait. For I mean next my week's, penis. I can't wait for ne- next week's edition of Trash Stories, which is like I was cleaning out some dude's apartment trash. Um, first of all, stole his patio furniture. That was tight. Um, pretty <laughs> sure that was trash because it was in basically essentially a big trash tarp. Anyway, um, went in through his just like looking around, just perusing for treasure, and just replaced my old my whole underwear collection with bad underwear. But <laughs> oh well. Uh, I've got a personal message here uh, for Ross from Megan. Happy fifth anniversary! I'm so glad I could get the guys whose voices you probably know better than my own to tell you. Next available. I really hope, the reason I said the next available is I really hope that this is five months later and, like, Megan withheld saying happy fifth anniversary to Ross until we could say it. And Ross is like, hey, happy fifth anniversary. And Megan just went, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm yep. It is, it is a happy, mm-hmm. Yep, mm-hmm, yep, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> You'll see. <laughs> In five months. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> Here's one for the brothers and family. This is just for all of us to enjoy. And this is from Timbo in Austin. And it says, Dear brothers, sorry if this isn't goofable. I wanted to say thank you for letting us feel like a part of your family. For some of us, it's a profound experience that can get us through tough times, just like the holidays. Oops, a daisy. Just wanted to make you know, uh, sure, you all knew you provide the world with more than just those sweet, sweet goofs. Good job. Did I do it right? That's from Timbo and Austin. Thank you, Tim. That's very kind. You mentioned the holidays. Yeah. So I hope the way we've we've repaid your kind message was waiting eight months. To, right. I think uh, that was it. that was the cause of Justin's oopsie daisy, not the fact that we help people get through the holidays with our podcast. Yeah, that was oh, we helping get through the holiday shit. <laughs> oh, no. The oopsie daisy was like December twenty fifth. Tim writes this very kind message, and we're like, yeah, Timbo, we're gonna get to that real soon, my man. Yeah, well, yeah. Welcome <laughs> to the family. Sit right there for eight literal months. <laughs> Sit in our virtual waiting room <laughs> till fall, and then we're going to get to this very kind message. But thank you, Tim. That's that was very, very nice. Thank very, you. Very Thanks. nice of you. Mugs, shirts, stickers, patches, tanks, and more are yours for the purchasing at MaxFunStore.com. Hey, you already love the podcasts, so why not take this to the next level and outfit your home and bod with our merch? MaxFunStore.com. Because if you have to wear a shirt, it should be one of ours. Brothers, my husband has spent every free moment of the past six months building and perfecting a screen-accurate replica of a Stormtrooper's armor. Not only that, but he's constructed a custom blaster with some sick lights and sound effects. This is just, this is not going to be a question. I can feel right. This is just braggy. This is a person who's talking about how cool. Uh, I have never been more proud, correct? 
But alas, he is hiding his light under a bushel for fear of what others, friends, family, coworkers will think. He was recently accepted to the 501st Legion, Whoa. and I wanted to sing his praises, but I held back out of respect for his wishes. Is there any way I can convince him to take his awesomeness public? That's just from Gmail. First of all, the 501st Legion is a legion of stormtroopers um, that, like, they do marches, they attend events, they're, like, a really big deal uh, Star Wars, like, battalion of fans. That's a really cool honor. Yeah, And you have to have, like, perfect armor to join, and they do, like, lots of charity work, and they visit hospitals, and when the rebellion comes, they will be the fucking first to stand sure. against it do they and have, crush it. Do they have one of these types of groups for Austin Powerses that I could, yeah. that I could this, audition, that I could, I guess, send in my audition tape for? But it would probably yeah. be called, like, the 69th Legion, because that's, like, Austin Powers, right? Swing. That would be it. Swinging groovy, yes. Yes, that is exactly it. Congratulations, Travis. My Thank bag, you very much. My bag is a man. Yes. <laughs> that is my bag, baby. You have found it. <laughs> Thank you, you for returning my bag to me. Crunky. Um, crunky, my mojo's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I think that this is actually a big opportunity because you are the only one who knows his secret identity. So you could start to read stories in the newspaper of like a sto- a mysterious stormtrooper. Oh, my God. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, Travis. Yeah, this is the bet. Like... Don't take this awesomeness public. Let him keep it secret. Because if I went over to one of any of my friends' houses right now, and they're like, "I think it's time that I show you something," and then they like pull down on the book, and they in their uh, on on their bookshelf, and then it rotates out, revealing their perfect fucking stormtrooper armor. That person would be a legend forever in my mind. I would never forget that moment. Right? Yeah, that would be amazing. You don't want that to be public. You want it to be a secret. That you share with, like, secrets are cool, too. You know, it may just be, you know how sometimes I like to wear one of my sexier pairs of me undies underneath Whoa. when I head into the office just to make me feel like I'm hiding a little secret. You know what I mean? And yes. I think that maybe this could be that for him. Maybe he wants that, like, yeah. feeling of knowing he does have a secret. Like, if somebody's like, yeah, as if you could ever show up in the office dressed like a stormtrooper. And he's like, uh-huh, you got me again, Doug. But in his back of his head. <laughs> with like, your oh. weirdly specific bullying. <laughs> <laughs> Doug always knows just which buttons to push <laughs> with pinpoint accuracy, <laughs> with laser, with blaster-like specificity. <laughs> he knows exactly where to shoot. I think that th- that's the question. Justin is correct. Is this a no? This is just for me kind of thing because that's awesome. But if this is like him going, I don't know. I'm afraid that I like people wouldn't like it. I think that's so far. Off. I don't know, especially in this day and age where Star Wars has become so mainstream. Yeah, I don't know of anyone it. who wouldn't be like that's awesome. That's a- and not only that because I think people also respond well to like when you put care and time into a thing, and if they don't, like, their opinions don't matter. But especially when you say, like, friends and family, like, if they react shittily, they ain't your friends, and you should discount them as family as well, because something like that that you, like, put so much time and effort and, like, really focus your energy on, I would think that anybody worth their salt would think that that was amazing. Unless his family's all hardcore Star Trek nerds. Oh. Oh. They've been building their accurate Borg costumes. Yeah, I guess that's the the only thing they got, right? Like, what else would it be? Like, here's my Klingon um, pants. I made a bat left. This is a couple coat hangers you twisted around a butter knife. (laughs) <laughs> it is gonna make it is gonna make hanging out with the five hundred first legion buddies a little bit awkward if like after they visit the hospital they're all taking their armor off and heading in to slam some Gatorade and go over to Chuck E. Cheese's or Billy Bob's Wonderland depending on where they live and uh, they're like well uh, how about you new fella how did you think it went uh, it was fun uh, well you can go ahead and no I'm I'm good I'm just gonna leave it um I'm just gonna leave it on I think <laughs> well. Okay, I don't have a lot of room in my Ford Fiesta, and I did offer to give you a ride with me, but um, that's fine if you. Yeah, I'm fine. Let's I'll take hop a in the back. Let's uh, let's all take a big group picture. Masks off. What do you say, guys? Uh, I've uh, I've actually got to go. Traitor! That's a little Star Wars hey, joke for everybody in the audience. He pulls off his helmet and it's Mark Hamill. I was like, what oh, the fuck? Oh, Travis, 
it a fun joke too from Star Wars? Thank you. <laughs> Who's your favorite Star Wars? That would be a, that would be the fucking funniest bit, wouldn't it? Like be like roll up to the five hundred first and just be like, "Who's your guy's favorite Star Wars? Which <laughs> which one of the starmen do you think has the best superpowers?" <laughs> uh, I like Iron Man. Is he? Uh, I like Bando. What happened to Jango Fat? Who? <laughs> Jango the Jango Unchained. Jango Fat. Django Fat. Um, do you guys want a Yahoo? Sure. Yes, please. If you're listening to this guy who made the Stormtrooper armor, that's awesome. Don't yeah, be ashamed. It's fucking great. Um, how about this one sent in by Dana Scarborough? Thank you, Dana. It's by Yahoo Answers user Tim Harrington who asks, how to work on my radio voice? This is all caps, by the way. So, like, I think they need work on their radio voice because right now it's just all shouting. I am wondering how I can work on my radio voice. I'll be going to college for radio broadcasting, but how can I work on my voice? I want to do late night jazz hours, and uh-huh. I know that you have to have a soft, trained, comforting voice. Huh. Interesting. What a twist. Why do you feel like you have to do that before you get to college? Listen, if they can't teach you how to have a smooth, comforting jazz voice, yeah. then maybe you're overpaying for your college <laughs> education. If they can't whiplash you into a smooth jazz voice, then what are you even doing at that conservatory? No, smoother at my tempo. <laughs> hey, everybody, we've got a uh, come. No, smoother! <laughs> you threw my mug of chamomile. Uh, I couldn't figure out a way to do that sound <laughs> <laughs> Slow it down. Lower the timber. As we all know, there's three types of radio voices. There's your JB. They're JB Millers. Oh, okay. Well, that's not a joke that anybody's going to get. Well, so let's let's. If they it, lived in Huntington, they would. Yeah. No. Let's, let's broaden. Let's broaden really our specific. net a little bit. Yeah. Um. There's the douche, and that covers, I would say, most of it. Can right. you do, can you give us an example, Griffin? Because that could be anything. Well, yeah, it, and and again, this has nothing to do with the personality of the person. It's just the voice, right? So it's just like, hey, everybody, here I come doing my voice. Nobody talks like this, but here I come at you with the weather on the tens, and he's on the ten, and the nine, and the eight, and the seven. He's running very slowly. If I can announce each yard that he's crossing, and touchdown. Come on down to Blockbuster Video. Have we got a deal for you? Coming up after the break, Tony Basil's back with her follow-up to Mickey. Mickey, too. And also Bob Carlyle. He is dropping it. BK, too. We got the world premiere streaming from Tidal. And then, but that voice could also be like shock jock, like Bob Carlyle's in the studio. He's got a nut out. I can't believe this. <laughs> Show us your boo. Show us your hey, boo, Bob Carlyle. Loving it. Loving it. <laughs> Bob Carlisle uh, getting wet and wild. Playing strip poker with Bob Carlisle in the <laughs> studio, and he has lost his shirt and his pants, and he's got a nut out. Ooh, ooh, ooh yeah. <laughs> I can see Bob Carlisle's butthole and everything. It's great. Next Using up, him like a butterfly periscope. <laughs> Next up, we paid homeless Reggie 50 bucks to smell Bob Carlisle's taint. Bow, bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. Now here's butterfly kisses, too. <laughs> Too hot for TV. <laughs> um, Unedited, explicit tag. Okay, so that's one voice. That's one voice, and then there's then there's soft voice, and this like covers an NPR, like your NPR voice. Yeah, but that could also just be jazz. Like, hey everybody, this is Griffin. I can't. I gotta stop doing stuff like that because I do get a lot of ASMR sort of reports in. Just like, hey, you did it for me. Thanks. Um, I'm glad that that's a service we provide. I'm I guess yet, so too, but it's different. It's not my intention unless I explicitly say that it is. You it know, feels like a violation. Um, but it's like, hey, everybody, this is my soft voice, and coming up on the ten weather on the tens, and also a thing happened in this country, and Griffin couldn't even think of an example of what that might be. <laughs> My favorite thing about that voice, especially in like a smooth jazz station setting, is that you know the history of some of these artists is is very uh, it, it could be very murky. There can be some bad. So to use that voice to be like, uh, and while on a heroin bender, uh, he stabbed three people and then went on to write "Stars in the Sky." Enjoy, <laughs> like that voice, like that. Yeah. That to me is like the best part of that voice. Is like you could say really horrendous things in that voice. People are like, oh, that's nice. It's very like, pleasant. I don't. 
I don't think you could, and you got to be careful not to juxtapose because you don't want to turn on your radio and hear somebody say, and then next up we paid almost Reggie $50 to <laughs> smell Bob Carlisle's taint. It makes it even sonically more unpleasant. And then the third one, of course, is... Oh, no, Griffin said there were three. <laughs> no, thank you about... <laughs> no, I'm good, got this. The third one is, of course, impressions. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that classic radio voice, impressions. It's the mainstay of every uh, used car ad that's yeah. ever been... It's like, yeah. hey, everybody, I'm Austin Powers. Come on down to Roger Beasley Toyota and get yourself a Prius, baby, my wife. You should buy this. Wait, I wasn't even doing a voice. You should buy this car. I can't do any voices. What was I doing? Who is that? <laughs> Who was that, Travis? I was so scared. I was trying to do Bill Clinton, but it sounded like Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Bill Clinton is hard. I'm going to try to just leap in. Let me see. Yeah, just like leap in. Let's Come all work on down on- for Beasley Toyota. Mm, I didn't inhale, but mm, you should bl- inhale these deals. <laughs> is that good? I oh, know right. Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, you're getting a Dale. <laughs> Come on down to Roger Beasley Toyota and come get yourself a Dale. It's me, President Barack Obama. Where is the beef? It's a Bob Carlisle Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, President Barack Hussein Obama. A lot of people forget the Hussein, but it's important. Uh, and uh, pizza, pizza. <laughs> Come on down to my Toyota town. Fuck. Oh, shit. You can't fucking curse. No, that's three. Did you guys ever... Um, Tra- Travis, you're excluded from this question because we know the answer. Do you guys ever do uh, like attempt to do an impression cold? Yeah, maybe just like around friends and family, and it comes out note perfect. Yeah, and then you can never capture it again. You can never like get back into the the groove of it. No, wait, why am I excluded from this? Because we know you can't. You, you, oh. I heard your Bill Clinton. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, I can't. I have no control over my voice at all until yeah. it leaves my mouth. And then I have to do a slow tuning in that takes me about a week to get to any impression. And then I immediately lose it. Last so week, no, when, Justin. Last week when I, I didn't even wind up, I just like busted into a pitch perfect Roger Klotz. I didn't know that that was inside of me. But I just opened up my mouth and a little bird came out. And then you did the impression. <laughs> and then I did the impression. Folks, that's going to do it for us. Thank you so much for listening to our program. We hope you've enjoyed your time with us. Can you do uh, an impression when you do the like the outro? But it's so boring. I hate doing it every time. I think it would spice it up if we just did a little bit of like a fun just, voice. Who do you want? Just uh, yes, yes. We will all do celebrity impersonations, but I will not pick. You guys have to tell me who the celebrity I am to impersonate is. Here's Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh no! Okay, that's, that's ridiculous. She doesn't have a specific speaking style. She I can does never do that. too. No, she's I'm a, she's a, Paltrow. And, okay, go on, Travis. No, wait, Travis. Sorry, fuck, that was Ringo Starr. No, you're fuck, Gwyneth Paltrow. Fuck, no, you're Gwyneth okay, Paltrow now. Are. Can I be Andre the Giant? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can be Andre the Giant. Mm-hmm. You don't get to pick your own. Who am I? Uh, why don't you be Andre the Giant? Oh, it sounds like I'm already doing Andre the Giant. Justin, I want you to do uh, Michael Keaton. These are the weirdest impression requests <laughs> ever. <laughs> what the fuck, Travis? I'll do, in- do, I'll do, I'll do Andrew do Jackson. <laughs> I'll do Bob Carlyle. Um, we do have a big announcement. Ding 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 ding. Hello, folks. This is Travis McRae coming to you with a very special announcement. Um, we are doing a candle night show this year. But wait a minute. Well, wait a minute. We told said that we wouldn't because you and I are having babies like right around then. Yeah, Griffin. But here's the twist. We're doing it in September because candle nights is whenever you want it to be. And that's when we're all going to be in Huntington. So that's when we want it to be. And some, sometimes you just feel that holiday spirit coming around while you're shooting a television show for CISO. Um, and sometimes and, you need a special. And, <laughs> and, and, that's, and that's sometimes you, you need the live footage of you doing your podcast for the television show that you're making. Sometimes the stars just align like that. Yeah, and sometimes you grab the stars by their stupid faces and say, get in a line. Get in a line, stars. This, September 30th. 
Um, so we will have more details coming and ticket links and all that stuff on our Twitter. We're trying to we're trying to put the tickets on sale this week, so like before the next episode goes up. So we'll tweet ahead of time to let everyone know when they'll be going on sale. But pay attention to the MBMBM Twitter. Yeah, September thirtieth in Huntington. We're going to be doing a candle night special uh, with Sawbones and maybe Schmanners, and we will be filming parts of it and putting it on the CISO show. We know so. this is we know this is coming in hot. Uh, it it really is a, like we think it's going to be a lot of fun. Otherwise, we, like we can't do a, any more live shows this year after this. Basically, yep. um, so so this is like our last chance to do this thing, and it's coming in kind of hot. But it's because this idea was it, it popped up only very recently. So, uh, candlelights in September, September thirtieth in Huntington. More details to come probably this week. Watch our Twitter at mbmbam. This is specifically uh uh related to this show but we make another show it's called the adventure zone it's a D podcast we make with our dad uh and uh a, a bunch of folks who listen to that show led by megan Rayley and uh with help from uh, carrie peach uh have made a project called the adventure zine where uh it's a collection of fan art and uh all the profits from this uh, uh fan art book are going to go to facing hunger which is a huntington uh based uh food bank and it's a really cool project, and they have they have raised a ton of money already. But you will definitely want Good to get a God. copy of these if you're. Yeah, I know it's it's Jesus. Theadventurezine dot com is the uh, address to go if you want to get a copy. And this isn't like a book that's going to be widely made and then sold in stores and stuff. This is how you get it. So uh, you'll want to head over to uh, theadventurezine dot com. And uh, and 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 pre-order your copy right away. So uh, get on board with that. And if you've already done that, thank you so much from from us and from everybody in in this area. We really appreciate your help. Um, uh, I also want to say because we we forgot to mention it on the last one. Um, so we did smart stuff. The the Justin and uh, oh, yeah, and we did it with Justin and Roman, Roman Mars, Mars, and that was a joke. Well, um, on episode two twenty five of 99% Invisible, Roman Mars took it, and he ran with it, and he made it funnier than I could ever possibly imagine. And it was wonderfully it's flattering hysterical. that he did that, and it's so cool. Um, go check it out. And if you haven't listened to 99% Invisible, like, what the it's fuck is wrong with best. you? It's so good. All right, let's 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 run down some stuff. Uh, thanks to Maximum Fun for having us. It's a podcast network we're really proud to be a part of. Go to MaximumFun.org. You can find a ton of podcasts there that you will absolutely love, like The Flophouse, and Throwing Shade, and Jordan Jesse Go, and Judge John Hodgman, all of them at MaximumFun.org. Uh, we're going to be at MaxFunCon East next weekend. And hopefully we we'll, cannot wait. We'll see so all y'all there. We're doing a live Adventure Zone while we're there um, that, that I'm excited for. Um, lots of surprises. I just got a bunch of new costume pieces for it. Oh, boy. Yeah. Um, and I got like a real-ass shield. Nice. So we do it other podcasts sick. that you can listen to at McElroyShows.com. Um, I won't go through the list of them, but we do a ton. And uh, if you like this show, then you're going to love one of the other ones we do. I guarantee it. Uh, thanks to John Roderick and the Long Winters for the use of our theme song. It's a departure off the album Putting the Days to Bed, which you should absolutely go listen to. Uh, and then after listening to that, you're going to want to go and point your your uh, your iTunes browser towards the Emotion B-sides from uh, from my leash, Carly Rae Jepsen. Um, and just just sort of emerge yourself in a sensory deprivation chamber that somehow does allow the sense of sound in and just and love just the sense of love just and let taste, it strangely. just fucking let it go, just let it all go in that Jepson tank. Uh, if you're looking for one track, might I suggest store? Oh, store guys, store. but store, but that store though. Uh, you want that final? Hit me. Yep. Here come that final. Uh, this one was sent in by Michael Knoll. Thank you. It's asked by Yahoo Answers user Gabriel M, who asks, Did Happy Gilmore continue professional golfing after the movie ended? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. My name is Justin McElroy. I'm Travis McElroy. I'm Griffin McElroy. This has been my brother, my brother, and me. Kiss your dad square on the lips. MaximumFun.org Comedy and culture.
Artist owned. Listener supported. Hello, and welcome to Podphone. What type of podcast are you looking for? You have chosen funny podcasts about bad movies. Rated R. May we recommend The Flop House? Three friends talk about bad movies and make each other and you laugh. Rated R. The Flop House is playing at your ears. If you download it right now or whenever. Rated R. To purchase tickets to The Flop House. You don't need to do that. Just download it. The Flop House. Rated R. For nudity, I guess.